I think that one of the most interesting things is the realization that there are so few short sleepers and that um, people who aren't short sleepers would like to be short sleepers. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it's really opened my eyes because I have to admit, I can definitely see where other people who need their eight hours are definitely handicapped <laughs> in a way. Jane Evans is a retired science teacher. She lives in a former coal town outside Scranton, Pennsylvania, and she has an incredibly rare trait. She only needs about five hours of sleep a night. I cannot make myself sleep longer than my body wants to sleep. I will lay there tossing and turning and tossing and turning, and, and it's not worry. I don't have any real worries. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not depressed. I don't have anxiety issues. I'm not stressed. It's a condition called familial natural short sleep. Researchers have spent the last decade studying people like Jane to better understand how they can thrive on so little sleep. Because inside Jane's brain might be clues to make us all better, shorter sleepers. I'm meeting people whose minds stretch the limits of human potential, and the researchers who are studying them to understand how we can all be healthier and more productive. This week, sleep. I'm Michael Tabb. This is Exceptional Humans. I never set an alarm. I've never slept in. There's no such thing as sleeping. You know what I mean? Because I'm awake. And once I'm awake, I don't go back to sleep. It just doesn't happen. You get used to it. You know what I mean? When you're with a person a long time, like her and I have been together, uh, you just get, uh, get used to it. That's Jane's husband. They've been married 50 years. He is not a short sleeper. It allows us to get a lot of things done in the morning that we have to do individually. She um, <clears throat> gets some of the uh, household chores done, and then usually I get up around 9 o'clock. But there are others in Jane's family that are like her. Her late father, her siblings, some of her nieces and nephews. They say it's normal to sleep 7 or 8. I want to know why I can't. I want to be the person that goes to sleep at 10.30 and does not wake up until 6. You're supposed to be healthier. and Of course, I don't have any health issues. A few months ago, Jane and Jackie were flown across the country to a sleep clinic at the University of California, San Francisco, where researchers are trying to understand what makes natural short sleepers special. So if we study them and compare it with us, we'll see where it's different, what makes them more efficient. Therefore, it can help us understand how sleep regulatory mechanism works, right? Good night, sugar. Sweet dreams. Don't let the bed bugs fly. From there, maybe we can come up with an idea to help everybody sleep better. That's Dr. Fu. She and her partner, Dr. Patachek, are pioneers in the world of short sleep research. It started 20 years ago in Utah, where they were working at a sleep clinic studying so-called morning larks. When we think of morning larks, typically they're people who go to sleep early and wake up early. Early to bed, early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. You may know an extreme morning lark. They naturally fall asleep around 8 p.m. and wake up around 4 in the morning. Less than 1% of the population has this, and for most of them, it's genetic. There were no changes in quality or quantity of sleep, only that they were shifted forward four to six hours earlier. Patachek started to notice some morning larks weren't like the others. They were waking up around 4 a.m., but they were going to bed close to midnight. These natural short sleepers aren't insomniacs, or people who forgo sleep to care for a family or work longer hours. They don't need recovery days, and they don't rely on caffeine or other stimulants. They get less than six and a half hours of sleep a night, without any visible drawbacks. They generally seem like healthy, super productive people. While I was in college, I got married. Then I got pregnant and had a child. So I'm, I'm raising a child, I'm going to school. As soon as I graduated from school, I got a job, which was teaching, 
but then I went to grad school while I'm raising two more kids. You know what I mean? And you're just busy, 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 busy. Did I think anything of it at that point in time? Um, not really. Patachak began working with Dr. Fu to understand these people. And they soon discovered, like morning larks, it was genetic. They started with just two natural short sleepers, a 69-year-old woman and her 44-year-old daughter. After sequencing their DNA, they discovered a rare mutation in a gene known to control circadian rhythms. They recreated the mutation in mice and discovered they slept an hour less than other mice in their litter. Fu and Patacek published their first results in 2009. Since then, lots of people have reached out to them, and the researchers have identified about 100 short sleepers by studying them and their family members. They've publicly announced the discovery of a second genetic mutation that leads to natural short sleep, and they're studying several more possible ones. These mutations seem to be altering hormone or neurotransmitter levels that affect wakefulness, which means that all the short sleepers' advantages may boil down to some small chemical differences. Ultimately, the researchers say that if we can pinpoint the chemicals and the paths they act on, we can make a pill that creates the same changes in the brain. A sleeping pill that doesn't just make you tired, but actually makes you sleep better and faster. Maybe we can come up with the idea of first help people who have sleep problems, right? We can help them increase their sleep efficiency or help them sleep better. And also, from there, to help everybody sleep better. Everybody has better sleep efficiency. Therefore, everybody will function in a higher level and also have a less chance of getting all kinds of chronic diseases, right? And so that's where we want to go. But there's still a lot of work to do. They need more subjects and tracking people down for the study is actually really hard. We've all probably heard of someone who says they don't need much sleep. Margaret Thatcher, Thomas Edison, and even Donald Trump have famously claimed to sleep four hours a night. But that doesn't necessarily make them natural short sleepers. Our circadian behavior and our sleep behavior is dictated in part by the genes we got from our parents. But at the same time, we like our parents, we don't always listen to our genes. And we drink compounds like coffee and alcohol, maybe take medications that might affect our drowsiness or wakefulness. And so we have to strip away all of these environmental influences. This is why families like Jane's are really important. Jane doesn't drink coffee, and she doesn't take any stimulants other than some tea that she likes because it's warm. And she says she's in excellent physical and mental health. On the occasions when I've slept longer than, say, six, I wake up with a pounding headache. The same thing happens generally if I take a nap. Too much sleep has a detriment effect on me, not, not, not too little. Most of us tend to have the opposite problem. We don't sleep enough. Sleep deprivation and sleep problems affect hundreds of millions of people around the world. Poor sleep makes you less productive, raises your risk of obesity and heart disease, and even shortens your life expectancy. You may be able to function without a full night's rest, but sleep deprivation tears your body apart. And despite all the claims out there, there's no scientifically proven way to cheat sleep. New research shows that sleeping in on the weekend can't make up for a week of insufficient rest. And while some studies suggest that you can bang sleep hours, oversleeping to prepare for night shifts, a recent meta-analysis found the quality of evidence very low, with serious risk of bias. If short sleepers are actually sleeping more efficiently, they could be a model for the rest of us. Is there a way that I can become a short sleeper? Uh, right now, no. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people ask me that, and I always say, I have not found something that I feel comfortable to try it on myself. Therefore, I cannot advise anybody to, to do anything, right? I just, I feel it's so important for us that I don't want to mess with it until I know it's for sure it's safe, right? For now, the researchers say you should just listen to your body. For most people, that probably means sleeping seven to nine hours a night. So I think the most critical question is, if you were all alone on vacation with no responsibilities, no one to worry about, under those circumstances, what time would you go to bed and, and what time would you wake up? 
Our lives aren't necessarily set up like that, which is why so many of us try to normalize our schedules with pills, caffeine, or other drugs. But if you sleep according to your body's needs, you should be at your healthiest and most productive. Do you like to do something kind of relaxing toward the end of the day? Well, yeah, that's basically what I do. I won't go to sleep if I go straight to bed. I have to get my mind to wind down. This is relaxing because you really don't have to think when you're working on puzzles. You just put the pieces in. Thanks for watching this Quartz member exclusive. This video is part of our series, Exceptional Humans. Keep watching for more stories on people whose minds stretch the limits of human potential in everything from sleep to memory to meditation.